Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us. My name is Sebastian Probst. I'm a professor of tissue mobility and wound care at the University of Applied Sciences and Arts Western Switzerland in Geneva, and currently president-elect of the European Wound Management Association. Together with Luc Theo, the UMAS Scientific Recorder and head of the Department of Plastic Surgery, Burns and Wound Healing at the Montpellier University Hospital in France, I will be the moderator of this webinar. This webinar is the third webinar in, in a series of webinars focusing on the various aspects of the implementation of telemedicine in wound management. The webinar will be recorded, so you will also be able to watch the webinar on demand. The recording will be available via the Yuma website within a few days. You will be able to request a certificate of attendance for the live participation in the webinar if you participate in minimum 70% of the live webinar. A link to the certificate will be sent after the webinar. The three speakers will each speak for approximately 15 minutes. After this, there will be time for questions. Please note that you can type your question in the Q&A box you see in here anytime during the webinar. If all questions cannot be answered in the webinar, they may be addressed in future webinars or other Yuma communication channels. I now will hand over to Luc Theo, who will introduce the speakers. Thank you, Sebastian. I'm pleased to introduce the presentations and welcome the speakers in today's webinar. In the last we telemedicine webinar, uh, I presented the telemedicine service implemented in France together with uh, Professor Ando Martin. You can now find this available on, on demand. In this webinar, uh, solutions implemented in Sweden, Spain, and Switzerland will be introduced. Our speakers in these webinars are presented on the screen. They are Ruth Oyen from Sweden, Sebastian Probst from Switzerland, and Jose Verdu Soriano from Spain. And now I would like to hand over to the first speaker, Ruth Oyen. Thank you very much, uh, Luc. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ruth Eyen. I'm a Swedish general practitioner working at Blekinge Wound Healing Center in the region of Blekinge, Sweden. And I'm also the chairwoman of the, the National Quality Registry Resource um, Group. And I would like to introduce how we in Sweden organize wound management via telemedicine. Actually, it's um, a whole system. It's a digital national dialogue and knowledge support system for wound management. Uh, we call it a digital arena for communication, competence provision and improved work environment. And why did we uh, want to do this? Well, we know from the report, the SB report in 2014 uh, on chronic ulcers in the elderly prevention and treatment, then in Sweden, we have an unequal treatment nationally. We also have an uneven access to wound specialists and sometimes really poor competence in wound management. And this in turn is leading to prolonged ulcer healing times and unnecessary healthcare journeys and also ineffective cooperation about over the boundaries of different caregivers. Uh, the system consists of a CE certified digital platform and mobile application for secure capturing pictures. And um, it's used uh, with the iPhone bedside. The assigned nurse takes a photograph with her telephone and um, um, collects some data on the patient. And the, the photograph and the data, they go two ways. They go into a digital platform and also to the National Quality Registry of RICSOR, 
And that is to guarantee that we can see this, the whole situation for patients with heart to heal ulcers in Sweden. So it's, it's a two way uh, communication. Uh, this system is clinician developed, is very user friendly. Uh, you log in, enter the NHS patient number, and um, photograph the ulcer, and then send it to the platform. Um, this is um, for uh, secure uh, patient safety and also uh, to uh, get an opportunity to get educational features. It's not only to be used during treatment to follow each specific patient's uh, healing process, but also for educational features. And it facilitates multidisciplinary collaboration. And we also have a system for digital consultations that is in cooperation with staff from Riksår. This national dialogue and knowledge support system involves patients not only in primary care and community care, but also in specialized hospital departments. But in Sweden, it's the primary care wound management team that usually takes care of the patient or the team within the community care. And um, that is the GP has to assess the correct diagnosis and so forth. But this system also involves uh, specialist consultations for specially awkward or difficult patient cases. We know today that uh, we have a, a rather confusing situation. I myself do get SMS and uh, emails with the pictures of uh, patients also without any data at all. And there is a lack of data security concerning encryption and delivery reliability when transmitting images. And we also know that staff find it time consuming to register in the National Quality Registry. And we would like to secure the information and secure the patient safety and also avoid unnecessary journals. And the link to Riksor, it's a guarantee that we have enough uh, uh, substance to get very good evidence-based uh, guidelines. We have made three research projects uh, for, to verificate to verificate this national dialogue and knowledge support system since 2015. Two within Vinova, that's Sweden's innovation agency, and one within SKR, that's the Swedish Association of Local Authorities and Regions, that is the Swedish authorities. And we have evaluated user experience and their engagement in um, in implementing such an e-health system for wound management by doing interviews. We have also seen how it works with uh, uh, multi multidisciplinary teams across the boundaries of different caregivers, and also how did the digital consultations uh, come out and the educational features. And all of this data are now uh, going to be a part of a doctoral thesis in Sweden. It's called Telealser. So we have a lot, uh, we know what to do when to implement the system. The Swedish authorities, uh, they recommend Swedish uh, healthcare to implement our national dialogue and knowledge support system because it has huge cost effective savings potential. And they stress that this implementation must be driven by regions and communities together in order to secure uh, that the quality of service will be good and also to reinstate that all the benefits goes directly back to the healthcare sectors, that is directly to the patients. And they say that using this service will enable a more effective wound management for this frail and vulnerable patient group. And what about the RICSOR? That's a national quality register that, that was, uh, and we started to develop it in 2004. And we have many research projects and uh, medical publications, of course. And we know that if 
if everybody in Sweden would use jigsaw, then the national cost effective savings potential would be 1 million euro a year in Sweden. And we also know that by using the reductive, by using the structure of the, the national quality registry, then we can reduce wound healing time with up to 60% that we have found in an article in the BMJ Open. And also that we can reduce irrelevant antibiotics and the patient's pain. And on the other hand, we can increase the quality of life and continuity of care, which is much wanted by our patients. Here we see uh, uh, Nina Åkesson. She is a wound specialist nurse of the year 2020 in Sweden. She's also the registered manager of Riksor. You can see just part of her, of her head. And she is here um, making a, 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 doing a digital consultation for a district nurse uh, who is uh, out uh, seeing a patient. And here are some experience from uh, the region Jämtland Härjedalen. That's a very vast region in the northern part of Sweden with only 140,000 inhabitants. And, but a patient can have 550 uh, kilometers back and forth to see to the hospital. So there are very vast distances. And, you, and here is the platform you see the patient's uh, leg and then a close-up picture of uh, the wound and then also a, a picture of the dressing material so that we can say is this dressing material good for this kind of patient in this in this um, in uh, this moment of the wound healing process um, Linda Järvedal, she's the wound specialist nurse in the whole region and she works very closely with Emil Lugrim, is a district nurse far away from where she is uh, ha having her, where she has her office. And they both say that this is an easy way to communicate when it's convenient for the two of them and that the wound healing process can be followed by the sharp pictures. And they also say that they can avoid unnecessary medical visits and that the support system has facilitated both their daily work and documentation, the medical record and RICSOR. And what the patient is very fond of, increased continuity of care. Outcome goals in short, for the patients, this will mean uh, further reduced ulcer healing time fewer healthcare journeys, reduce risk of being infected by COVID-19, reduce irrational antibiotic treatment, but also reduce risk for medical complications like amputations and sepsis and hospitalization. For the organization, this, this means increased access to wound specialist competence and the daily competence provision by using the e-health. That's very interesting because I'm myself a, digi a national digital consultant and I can see how the different units, how they can learn from one patient case and the next time they don't have to ask about what to do. And it has also installed effective teamwork between primary care, community care and specialized hospital departments. And the very uh, automatic transfer of data to RICSOR saves a lot of staff time. Some years of wound management, this picture snapshot I took some 30 years ago on, in the countryside when I made a house call, this lady with large venous ulcers and compression uh, therapy, which really isn't a compression therapy as you can see in the picture today, we have teamwork, e-health solutions such as telemedicine, and this will all lead up to a patient group with high integrity and high medical status. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, Ruth. Uh, please do add any questions you may have to Ruth Oyen in the questions yes. box. I will now, uh, now uh, hand over to the second speaker, 
uh, our uh, moderator, Sebastian Probst. I have the pleasure to um, give you an overview of the Geneva um, experience of uh, teleconsultation. So I will uh, talk quickly, why do we do uh, teleconsultation, what time of a team is involved, and I want to show you a little bit the pathway um, we are doing. Why do we do teleconsultation? First of all, and I think you experienced that also in your clinical practice, if you have a question to a colleague, you send a picture of a wound to your uh, colleague, and that was the same case in, um, in the wound care clinic. That means nurses from nursing homes were sending pictures via WhatsApp or via Skype or via email to uh, the specialist nurses to ask for some advices. They answered and um, sometimes they, they had some misunderstanding. That means um, what do I have to use now? What kind of dressing? Because they don't have it, had it in their nursing home or a lot of cases where they were missing information, especially diagnosis, etc. Additionally, then they were asking, could you please send the patient to the outpatient clinic? That means the patient had, the, the, had to come to the outpatient clinic. The nursing home had to organize some uh, transport to, for the patient. And most of the time, the patient had to pay that for themselves. Or the nurses, they were traveling to the nursing homes and then uh, that means they had to do that in the evening after their consultation. This is pretty costly and I was a little bit uh, astonished that nobody was um, ticking the box with costly, mainly for the nursing home or for the patient for not doing telemedicine. So we decided to, um, to develop a project with uh, 44 nursing homes in the canton of Geneva. And we um, launched a survey. And uh, luckily, we had a response rate of 82%. That means 36 uh, nursing homes replied. And 92% said, oh, yes, that's a very good idea. And they supported to do a project about teleconsultation. They also said, Oh, that's good. So we receive a faster response. We can do a better care for the patients. And especially, we prevent the hospitalization. And they were looking forward to have an interprofessional collaboration between the nursing home and the outpatient clinic where different disciplines are involved. And of course, they could lower the costs, especially for patients and the nursing homes. And Interestingly, the management of the nursing homes, they said, oh, well, we can even lower the cost for the further education. So this, the teleconsultation, uh, will be also an education for the nurses. So we started this uh, joint project of my university and the uh, Réseau Delta Cité Génération in Orne, Geneva. So we did firstly a literature review. We we're looking what's about what's out in a teleconsultation telemedicine. Then we were elaborating a wound documentation, and uh, we were taking the international standards and we were applying that to our context. Then we had to look for somebody that was programming that. That was not very easy because. This person had, was involved in several projects. That means it took a little bit more time to develop this app. The goal of this app was that we have uh, all the information such as the etiology, the wound size, uh, the uh, wound location. And the big goal was that the nurses do not need more than seven minutes to fill in all the information and send it to the teleconsultation. One uh, specialty is also that each patient will receive a QR code 
as a recognition. So we do not have the names or um, uh, the diagnosis on the, um, on the tags where we measure the wound. Afterwards, the nurses have the possibility to measure the wound. So who is involved? As I said, it's a nurse-led teleconsultation that takes place twice a week. The first consultation will be around 20 minutes. So the nurse will read the, um, the transmitted information by the diagnosis, et cetera, and how the wound will uh, look like. Then um, the nurses write their report. They issue also the invoices, and if necessary, they will travel. A second consultation is uh, planned and it's about 20 minutes for this, for this consultation. There is always a physician as a backup for diagnosis if needed or if the uh, prescription is needed. But how does it work? Here I have a pathway of uh, what we think is uh, feasible for clinical practice. I will go through each point now and demonstrate that with a case. So the nurses, they are taking a picture, they are putting the QR code there, and they are um, filling in the questions, etiology, uh, what kind of wound it is, if there is a diagnosis, or um, how does the, uh, if there is some exited odor, etc. Then this nurse, it can be also a GP or the physician of the nursing home, will send it to the teleconsultation, that means to the wound care specialist nurse. As I said, twice a week, they do their teleconsultation and they start measuring the wound and are assessing what um, is uh, given. Then they are writing their report and sending it back to the um, sender. That means, in our case, to the nursing homes. Additionally, they also send the first invoice and what is a little bit special, the problem in, the, in some nursing homes are that they don't have all the different kind of dressings that are available on the, um, on the mar on market. So they can, the nursing homes can even order the dresses, dressings and the first, the couple, uh, first couple of dressings will be sent to the nursing homes. That means they don't have to order an entire box of the dressings. Afterwards, the nurses, the GPs, or the physicians in the nursing homes, they are applying what the, the prescribed protocol and they are giving some feedback. That means there will be a follow-up till they think now we are on a good way and the, the wound uh, closure is very, very close. Here again, the pathway, and we think through these different kind of steps, we reach, um, uh, a, yeah, we, can, we, we have a very good uh, teleconsultation. What was the problem when we talk about teleconsultation and COVID-19? So most of the uh, papers that are out and what the, I, I've heard from Telemedicine was big also during um, the lockdown of COVID-19. Here, it wasn't. That means that there was no use of telemedicine. That was, the problem was because the specialist nurses, they were not available because they were also, they, they work also as independent nurses and they were taking care of the patients in their homes. So they were not in the clinic. And for nursing homes, this project was not priority. That means all the projects were, were, that were going on were putting on hold. Additionally, there was also a lack of staff in the nursing homes 
some nurses that were sick, that means they uh, were affected by, the, by COVID-19. So what were the challenges we faced implementing telemedicine in these nursing homes? For one of the problems was that uh, not all nursing homes had a system or either they were using Android or iOS. That means we had to deliver them the equipment with tablets, with uh, phones, and so that they can use telemedicine. Additionally, some of the problems were also that some nurses have never used a, a tablet or never used an application with um, standardized wound care. So that means we had to teach them how to do it and um, come back and teach them again. Additionally, there was sometimes a communication problem between specialist nurses and the nursing home physicians, especially when they prescribed dressings they didn't know, or when the nursing home physician didn't agree with, with what the nurses prescribed. Then we have also communication problems between the specialist nurses and the nurses of the nursing homes because they didn't get exactly what was prescribed so they had to ask the nurses, so they were calling them, and sometimes they had to go back to the nursing homes. That means the specialist nurses had to go back to the nursing homes and um, explain that them the, the, what, what they were prescribing and show them also how to apply certain products. In conclusion, we can say that um, the nurse-led consultation with the physician backup is uh, a success and um, we have, we could enhance patient outcomes and that was also and is the feedback of the different nursing homes. We could lower the costs, that means we could send the dressings directly to the nursing homes so they don't have to buy um, boxes of dressings or we lowered also the transfer costs from the nursing home to, for, for patients for the, from the nursing home to the outpatient clinics. And we could, when we introduce this pathway, I think this is, is it's a very good way how to conduct telemedicine. As I already said, communication is key. So we have to carefully communicate with the physicians, with the colleagues, and explain everything clearly so that, we'll, that there will be no misunderstanding. And the app we are using at the moment, it's user-friendly. The nurses can really um, put all the information within seven minutes in there and send it to the uh, specialist nurses. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sebastian, for your presentation. Again, please add any questions you may have in the questions box, and we will address these uh, questions after the presentations. And finally, we would like to introduce uh, uh, telemedicine services that has been implemented in, in Spain. And uh, uh, Jose, uh, can you uh, give your uh, presentation, please? Hello, hello for, to everybody and good evening. It's a pleasure for me to be here with all of you interested in this topic. Uh, firstly, I will talk with the aims of my presentation. And for this presentation, firstly, uh, I want to present a quick reflection on the issues or troubles arising on this topic in Spain and most likely in other countries. And uh, as you know, and uh, Sebastian mentions, since the beginning of the COVID pandemic, lots of articles have been published and some of them are regarding telemedicine uh, and wounds. Uh, I suggest uh, the audience, for instance, the one published by Dr. Luke Thiot at Yuma section on telemedicine in Yuma webpage, we have a 
section on telemedicine that you can access and learn more about it. Uh, my second aim is to present Elcos Web App, who is a, a platform developed by the GNUPP, a wound care organization, scientific society in Spain. And finally, to present how this app may be useful for telemedicine as well as the result achieved until. And I want to uh, express, in my opinion, what is the reality in Spain and most likely in other countries. One of the things that it's happened or the issues happen in, in my country from my knowledge is that we don't have regulations, norms, court laws regarding telemedicine. And from my point of view, this is a, a problem. And as you can see in the question before, we have a great variability in terms of systems to provide telemedicine, telehealth, or teleconsulting. In my country, each setting, unit, or healthcare provider have their own system. And that implies that we don't have interoperability. And this uh, is reflected in some examples in Spain. We have different regions with different platforms. Most of the platforms are uh, developed or implemented ad hoc, and uh, we can uh, change information between different systems. So one question that I made is, how could we reduce the variability providing telemedicine? For sure that we have different options to answer these, these questions, but from my point of view, regulations are mandatory to have a reduction in the variability. But until this occur, at least in my country, this is our proposal from the GNUPP. We have developed an integrated system for wound management, whose name is ELCOS. And now I will uh, show you some uh, images on how the system works. Before that, I, I, I must to tell you that we start to develop this project in 2013. And uh, our idea was to develop a tool to analyze and manage wounds, identify and unmet needs. Before that, we made a review on the available tools at that time on the market. And uh, as you know, most of these apps are uh, on the market uh, by paying, and uh, most of them are disappearing and others are arising on the market. This is a di dynamic uh, world. And in this, in this uh, real situation, we decide to develop Elcos. What is Elcos? Elcos is a uh, Sorry, it's a web app that is independent of operative system of OES devices also. is the signet for measurement and management of chronic wounds. And throughout the complementary use of a smartphone, it allows the measurement and monitoring of wounds as well as their evolution, making the process more speedy or agile. You can analyze wound area, percentage of tissues of the wood band, and a score with uh, ResVets 2.0 index. Uh, probably most of the people who are in, in the webinar are not related with uh, ResVets. ResVets is a, a score uh, who was developed and validated in Spain to uh, score the status of the wound and track the progress to wound healing. And this tool, uh, ELCOS, it's a tool oriented for both professionals and patients. The main features of the app is that, firstly, it's free for all the people. You can uh, register and access to the, to the app. Uh, we can provide another system in public and private way on the app. It's possible to establish an online chat between professionals as teleconsultation, but also with uh, the patients. 
Uh, and uh, in addition, we, we can install or uh, implement the app in-house. For instance, we have implemented this app in a vascular service in the Hospital de la Fe in Valencia. And we, we can create specific accounts to departments or group of people who work together. As you know, we work in team works and one patient probably is managed by different professionals. But we can create a uh, group uh, um, access and one patient can be managed by different professionals. And we are testing this in the Hospital Universitario de San Agustin in Oviedo. Uh, I will present you some slides in a quick demo with, uh, with features of the platform. But before that, I, I want to say to you that this is a hierarchical uh, system where the clinicians are the users who, who are uh, starting the, the platform. The clinicians or the health professionals only have access to their patient information and the security is grant. Under the clinician's uh, um, uh, user, you have the, the patients. Each clinician can have, can have several patients. Inside the patients, we have cases or wounds and you, have, you can have different wounds or episodes by patients. Are on the wounds, we have pictures or photos. Uh, this is where is all the information about the case, okay? We can access to the platform from this uh, web page. This is the, the main entrance to the ELCOS app and you can see three boxes on the left. We have the access for the registered users. In the center is the, the box to register as a new professional using the app and on the right is for the patients. When you access to the system, we have a dashboard with a menu bar on the left. When you, you have the home page, uh, a page with a global resume of your patients, you can know uh, how many patients you are treating, how many of them are healing and so on. And also you have an access for your list of patients. In the dashboard, you have on the, on the right the last patients you have you are treating and also we have a space to create groups as i mentioned you you can have a group a group of professionals a team work and all of people who is in the group created can access the same patients in the patients list you have a database of all your patients and if you select a patient you can access you in the case the case in this case, in this example is a ischemic ulcer in the frontal uh, foot, uh, right foot. And when you access to the information of the patient, you can track all the pictures and the analysis from the first to the last uh, photograph taken. You can uh, upload new photos or images. You can analyze the photos and we have graphs to track the progress of the different tissues on the wood bed or the track of the score of the race wedge scale. Also, we have more information about the theology, location, and treatments. And this is the, the screen where you can analyze the, the photographs and you can implement the items of the race wedge score. And a quick uh, demo on images. First, you, you must to take a mask of the wound and then the platform automatically uh, analyze the tissue types on the wound bed. If you think that the analysis is not totally correct, you can't uh, modify the analysis. When you modify the analysis, the system is intelligent and the system learns uh, with the modifications you are making in the process and in the next uh, cases you analyze, the system is more reliable. Well, this is the final uh, picture of, the, of this case. And here you are the, an example of a 
complete report of the patient you have in the uh, in the app uh, then the characteristics of the patient in the middle you have the original photo and the analysis and on the bottom you have the evolution of the case here you are another example and in this system we can we can use different uh, um, tools to calibrate the image for instance here you, you have a blue circle but you can use for instance a euro coin or a personalized uh, tool for calibrate and as i mentioned before you can start an online chat with for instance an, a wound care specialist and you can uh, chat with text and also you can share the images and you can drown in into the images and talk and uh, collaborate with other health professionals to finalize uh, i show you our main results we have now 940 active users and this is growing uh, you have the figures from 2017 with the presentation we made in Amsterdam and also in Krakow we are growing on the numbers of people registered in our platform and also we have 3,322 pending uh, clinicians to provide access to the system when you register to the system this is not automatically grant uh, we must to uh, assure that the people who want to register is in reality a uh, health professional uh, he or she must to sing uh, informed consent we must they must provide the qualifications of their profession and so on after that we grant the access to the platform. Uh, there are uh, 937 analyses performed in the platform. And uh, where are we going in, in the future? We, we want to consolidate figures and we are developing further utilities. For instance, uh, perilational area analysis, bacterial image analysis, uh, push message systems, and uh, to develop clinical decision algorithms based upon historical and professional info and also upgrade the image analysis system based on wound database sources uh, this is my conclusion uh, elcos will provide aggregate statistics of the cases managed in the platform to know quantify and ultimately measure the impact of injuries on public health and the social cost that entails elcos can be used as a telemedicine platform via private chat with both clinicians and patients sharing pictures and solving problems in collaboration and we want to implement in other european languages because until now we only have the platform in spanish we have not only people from spain we know that we have uh, people registered from uh, Spanish-speaking countries like Latin America and also our friends from Portugal that understands very well Spanish and uh, are uh, registered on the platform. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, Jose. Uh, we have some uh, questions, uh, I think. Uh, well, for uh, you, uh, Jose, uh, don't don't you don't you think? Uh, what about the the wound depth diagnosis? Uh, can you can you check the undermining uh, with uh, just pictures uh, without video? Yeah, this is a good uh, question to solve because I talk that. In the system, we have two uh, tools in, rea in really, because we have the images and also the ResVet scale or ResVet score. In ResVet score, one of the items is depth, and the other is surface uh, uh, edges of the wound, uh, uh, exudate, and so on. So we, we use both 
the eye image. I, I know that the eye image is two, two side uh, image, it's not three dimensional. And this is the reason that we, beside the eye image, we have the red vest score. Thank you very much. Uh, there is a, a question, I think it's uh, uh, for Root. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you mentioned uh, equal access to care in a national uh, uh, wide territory. Uh, we, we have that in, 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 in France. And uh, uh, the question is more general. Do you, do you think that after the, the COVID period, uh, Telemedicine will will stay will 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 be adopted as a as a permanent option. Yes, I think so because we have used it more during the COVID because it could uh, stop it could prevent uh, getting um, uh, getting the COVID. Uh, so uh, I, I think it, it it's coming to stay. Of course, it is, and since. Um, we're linked to the registry. We have 30% recovering, 30% of all patients with heart to heal ulcers in Sweden. So it's not going to stop. It's going to be evolved and being better. Thank you very much. Uh, I see uh, another question for this, you. This is a question for me. Yes, what score did you yeah. mention when answering the question uh, about undermining? Thank you, Him Sun K. Uh, I mentioned uh, a score that was uh, developed and validated in Spain, and we are working on, on publish some papers on, on the score because it's only known in Spain and it's uh, used in some uh, articles published in. in uh, wound journals, international wound journals, but always when we send some uh, paper with the use of that score, the reviewers say, what is Resvich? And as you say here. And Resvich is a, it's a, a scale, it's a score who measure six items. One is surface, death, wound age, uh, tissues on the wound bed, uh, exudate, and uh, uh, an item who is composed by 14 items, and that means infection, inflammation, suspicion of biofilm. Are seven, uh, 14 questions with yes or no, and each question sums one, one point on the score. The score sums in total 35, this is the worst wound that you have, and the Zero is Haley Dwin. Thank you very much again. Uh, all these uh, scores, and I, maybe I have a question for Sebastian. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, your, your app is uh, filled by the local nurse. It takes yes. seven minutes. Uh, Jose just told us uh, more than 14 questions, so I didn't mention the time, but I think it's uh, approximately also seven minutes. Uh, do you find uh, your your system is based on Visio, and I think uh, uh, we adopted that also in France. Visio better than just transmitting uh, pictures because during the Visio, as it as you mentioned, you can you can introduce a kind of uh, training the the local nurse to 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 do the right. Uh, um, approach the right assessment, the right. Um, but the question is uh, for for uh, at the nursing home time. Who who pays for that? Is it included in the in the normal uh, well payment system for nurses, or is yes. it something special? No, it's included in the nursing home. All the what they do, it's um, they um, it's it's paid by uh, they have to register the time. And um, so they can say, we, we use that much time for wound care. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a false thing. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, Sebastian, maybe it's oh. uh, time oh. for you. Okay, then we would 
all like to thank you for uh, taking part in this webinar. We don't forget uh, you will be able to uh, access the video recording of the webinar on demand via the Yuma website within a few days. We would also like to mention that Yuma has sent out a survey on the use of telemedicine in wound management in Europe. If you have not already responded to this, we can ask you to do so. You will receive a link to this survey after the webinar. We hope that you will join us for one of the next webinars on telemedicine. The next webinar will be held on October 29th and will focus on the patient and the staff education opportunities offered by telemedicine services. You can keep yourself posted about this via the Yuma web newsletter our social media or our website. Thank you again, stay safe and good night.